I'm Paul Clareville. I'm the pastor at Westminster Presbyterian Church in beautiful suburban Burbank. And I was the pastor delegate, uh, the teaching elder delegate uh, from San Fernando Presbytery to the 220th General Assembly in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I'm Beverly Stokes from First Presbyterian Church of Newhall, and I was voted as the ruling elder, elder to go to General Assembly. And we're here to give you a YouTube update on what happened at General Assembly, mostly our experiences because you probably have read about most of what happened. And so what we're here to do is to provide a face, uh, not only to what happened, but personal experiences and also to um, uh, give you a face to talk to later if you want any uh, to, to communicate with us. Jessica Phoenix was also, uh, she was a youth advisory delegate and she can't be here. Uh, she goes to UCLA, so she's not with us today. Um, Beverly, do you want to talk about any of your experiences just seeing the place, what it was like, what you're thinking? Um, when, well, first of all, let's go back a little bit as to how we got to the, where we're going to, to get to a general assembly. First, we were in our presbytery meeting, there was a vote and that's how the two of us were elected to go to general assembly not really knowing what the experience was going to be like it was a little bit like overwhelming because when you first start in this you get all kinds of mail you get people talking to you about different topics that you're not even you haven't even read up on yet so there's a lot of reading there's a book about this thick of all the different overtures that we read and went through so just the um initial thing before you go is a little bit overwhelming and if you don't know the topics that are even being voted on you have to do a lot of research on it so my initial thing was okay this is going to be a lot of reading a lot of long nights and it was we were there for you know the whole week from morning to night um, making decisions on over 800 business needs that need to be taken care of and it's um, it's like your church is here, and then there's a presbytery, and then there's the general assembly. So I don't think most people understand, you know, well, what is general assembly? And it happened to be over 600 commissioners going, half of which were ruling elders, half of which were teaching elders. And then those are the people who make the decisions for the churches. One of the first things that we did after arriving at general assembly, other than worship and starting out uh, with uh, uh, preliminary meetings uh, was to go into our different committee meetings. Uh, I served on civil unions and marriage. Uh, we, uh, we met for several days uh, talking to each other, hearing what the different overtures were that were before us, uh, and then um, hearing uh, open hearings for about, I think it was about two and a half to three hours of people who came and spoke to us about their desires of what would happen within the uh, denomination. We then uh, de deliberated on our own and moved into parliamentary procedure where we voted on and brought to the, uh, to the General Assembly a motion uh, that had been moved by uh, a, a presbytery and then two substitute motions, uh, which we then debated on the floor of the General Assembly. And the committee that I was on was immigration. And again, backing up a little bit about how you're chosen to be on each committee is that I think they do some kind of drawing and then about two weeks before you go to General Assembly you're told what committee you're on. So you go, the, like Paul said, the first couple of days you're in that committee only. So what we discussed was immigration only. We had several speakers coming in, we had lawyers coming in to make sure that we worded things correctly. Then uh, we worked at small tables and then the whole group of about 50 to 60 people made decisions that we would bring back to the floor to make decisions on. And there were over, um, how many uh, overtures, a hundred and... Oh gosh, yeah. I think about 120, right, overtures that we had. So um, when we got out to the floor, decisions were already made before. It's like being in um, your session meetings, you know, you're on a committee like for stewardship or children's, you make decisions in that, then you bring it to session. Well, this is like that. We're in our committees and then we bring it back to the floor and then there's a vote for it. Lots of discussions, hours upon hours on a couple of the topics, uh, debates. People got up and were allowed to give their opinion for and against. And then um, at one point, then we asked for a vote. And even the vote takes a while. You want to explain the voting system? Voting is done uh, through a process of, um, uh, first of all, polling the youth advisory delegates, the theological advisory delegates, and the ecumenical delegates. Uh, on their perceptions of what is going on and then we have been advised as we are constantly told by the by the moderator 
and uh, then we vote. Uh, Jessica and Beverly all, and I sat together uh, and uh, we were able to discuss with each other. We were able to, to be there for each other and, and such. Um, it's a long, grueling process to get through all of that. It's, it's fairly hard to keep yourself engaged throughout all of it, uh, but uh, not, not impossible and it's important uh, work that we were doing. Uh, so we made it through, I think the, uh, the actual days of plenary were about three days of plenary, if I'm not mistaken, something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, three or four days, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The final day uh, was a marathon day going from about 8 o'clock in the morning until about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning the next day uh, until Ken and I caught a taxi back to the airport uh, and caught our plane back uh, to Southern California and I knocked the dust off of the shoes of, of, uh, off of my sandals in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and I stayed until Sunday. Um, the last day was when they tie everything up, all the business, and then we have worship. Every day there was a worship service because that was the main focus of what we're doing here, right? <laughs> so. so, Beverly, would you consider this something that you'd want to do again? Is it something that you... Uh, I would do it again. Um, I would rather, though, somebody else have the opportunity because you really, even though we're talking about it and everybody who's gone has come back and talked about it, you don't get it until you experience it live. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would do it again. Um, when, I, when people ask me today, you know, when I'm in church and they say, well, how'd it go? And I'm going to be doing an adult education class on it um, in a couple weeks. They say, well, what was it like? You know, what did you do? And you're trying to answer questions, but they're asking you questions coming from a different place. Perfect, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, how do you answer how immigration went or how the marriage, you know, topic went? because they're looking for one specific part instead of the process of it all. What was the best thing for you? Um, to get a un more clearer understanding of the way that Presbyterians do their work. Mm -hmm. what, were you, what do you think was the worst? Um, the frustrating thing was when mostly when people were up there talking about their pros and cons and stuff and you know after two or three hours your people are saying the same thing even though it's different people right. and so you get to a point where okay if it's not adding th something to it then don't say it However, everybody wants to have their voice said. So I think that was very frustrating for yeah. me. Yeah, I think the best thing for me was was the issue of the of the connectional 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 nature of our church. Uh, the the friends that I not only um, knew before going. I, uh, this is probably my fourth general assembly, second as a delegate. Um, but but just me, seeing old friends and people that I've I've known for many many years. And then meeting new friends, uh, uh, cre uh, creating new relationships. One one person from uh, Southern California, or Southern South Carolina, rather, has actually come out and visited me since then. Oh, okay. uh, so it was really a neat, <clears throat> really neat time with that. I think my greatest frustration is is that it's too big, and we're making too many decisions for too many people from too many varied situations. Um, I, I think that. Um, if if we were sitting, if we were the General Assembly right now, uh, we could sit and we could dialogue and we could discuss. I did not find any real free dialogue, give and take, uh, within the committee meetings, within the assembly itself. Uh, it was very political, uh, very uh, even the programs that were oriented toward uh, listening to each other and hearing each other. There was no exchange. So if somebody would say something that I believed to be an error. There was no form for me to be able to share that, and I find that very, very frustrating on making policy. Uh, and uh, part of me wonders, is that always the way it's been? Is that the way that all governance works and such? I don't find that in our presbytery meetings. I find that there is opportunity for doing that, but, but you're also dealing with a much smaller group of people, uh, and, and a, though not completely, somewhat homogeneous uh, group of people. So I don't know what the future for our General Assembly is. I truly don't. Um, I, I, I think. They're trying to respond to some of the issues of the day, uh, some of the issues of our fractured nature, uh, though there was really very little vi uh, mentioned from the dais about that. Uh, and um, so I'm, I'm curious to see where everything's going to go. Yeah, and, and for me, the, um, I agree with you. I met a lot of new people. I didn't know anybody when I went there. I didn't even know Paul <laughs> when I went there. So it was all a new experience as far as meeting people. I don't have trouble doing that, so it was pretty easy for me, and I enjoyed doing that. And I do have contact from some of the ladies and gentlemen that I met there. Um, the, the one thing that is still in my mind is that, okay, when we were told we're going there, and then I asked, what's our responsibility when we come back? 
you know, and then I still wonder what the responsibility of the church is. I still don't have a clear understanding. There were decisions made in there, and you come back, and now what do you do with that information? You know, and on the website, of course, it has all of the different information and how it came out. Now, how do we as individual, or even Presbytery, San Fernando Presbyterian, what do we do with that information? What is the local church is going to do with that information? Okay. So that's where the frustration will come if we did all this work for a whole week with, you know, a thousand people. Is it just going to go by the wayside? Okay. That's my concern. I so enjoyed the worship service. Mm -hmm. From the very first day to the very last day, I was, you know, in awe. You know, I, I just really enjoyed that. And meeting people, I enjoyed that. And just learning a little bit of the policy because I don't know it all. You know, and I don't think I ever will. And I'm not a political person at all, so it kind of blows my mind that I even went and did this. I am conflicted on the issue of gay marriage. Uh, and it's fairly ironic that God put me onto that committee. Um, I believe on one side that the government has uh, no right to tell somebody that they can't be married. Um, on the other side, I believe that scripture is very clear uh, that, uh, that that is not what we are to be about. On the, on the other side, I also believe we need to invite people into our churches in order for them to experience the process, not of sal salvation, although certainly uh, I would hope that that would, would happen, but of sanctification uh, that, that a marriage would provide. So I have deep divisions within my very soul on this. But I know that what we need to do is we need to stay with Scripture. And so my feeling on it was, was when we got to this last vote uh, that uh, we were, um, we, that, that the committee, that, that the General Assembly was terribly divi divided on this. And so I got up, I walked around the room, there was palatable anxiety going on. And I sat down on the couch and I just thought, um, I, 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 the, a gentleman who came out and visited me from so South Carolina, actually, he sat down next to me. I looked at him, and I just put my head down in a prayer, and I said, God, please show yourself here. Show us what we're supposed to do. And it felt like we were going to lose this uh, overwhelmingly. And the vote was taken, and we won. I don't think anybody won, but I think that Scripture prevailed. And I think that that, in, in many respects, is a win. And it's a win that needs to have more discussion and more talking about and more listening across tables. But when that vote was taken, there, there wasn't, nobody applauded. Nobody you know, did any huzzas. The oxygen was sucked out of the room. Uh, it, it was a visceral feeling uh, of, of that. And we, we all just sat there and went, what just happened? I've spoken to people who were watching on, on, online who said they had exactly the same feeling. We never saw that coming. Um, and, uh, so I think that's my greatest memory of that. And I'm still trying to wrap my soul around what that means. And I, and I, I under, I was there beside him and saw the pain that he was going through that. And, in the room when you have a thousand people in there trying to make a decision on this. There was no win, there was no losing. Um, the decision, there was no decision made on it, it was postponed is what it was. And which is maybe at this particular time in our lives was the best decision that could have been made. Because it definitely divides the groups. It divides churches, I believe, and people within the churches. So at this time I do want to thank everyone who gave me the opportunity to go to General Ex Assembly it was a great experience for me, and I would like to say for anybody who has never been, it was my first time and I, his fourth time going. If you've never been, you should take the opportunity to try to go. And I want to say, don't ever do this to me again. No, kidding. I, I, again, it was a privilege to, to be there for you uh, and uh, to know that you were there for us, that you were watching us. I, I, I got constant text messages from people. Uh, I, people were telling me they were watching it. People were engaged with this. And I got a lot of prayers uh, for people. So I, I thank you for that, Beverly and, and Jessica. And I hope that, you, um, that we honored what it is that you sent us to do. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, Beverly's address, no. Uh, you, can, uh, you can reach <laughs> us through the Presbytery office, and uh, we will answer them as best we can. Thank you so much.